Stupa, and I'm going to be taking you on a tour of Boda Stupa. I'm here with my friend. My name is Hi, everyone. We literally met just like 10 minutes ago. So, welcome. Come, let's go. <laughs> which is an authentic Vietnamese restaurant here in Boda. Now I know Boda is in Nepal and it's also known for its Tibetan food, but we're going to try this new Vietnamese restaurant. What would you like to eat? Your first time here? <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> here for the first time. Mine, mine too. Well, Vietnamese food is normally healthy for you. Yeah, have you tried it before? Mm, I've tried it before. Yeah. Oh, I've been to Vietnam. Oh. So, yeah. They have a really good soup. It's called pho, yeah. P-H-O. It's a really good soup, hot noodle soup. Yeah. But maybe we'll just try something like a spring roll yeah, sure. or some summer roll. Sure. Let's try it. Yeah. at a Vietnamese restaurant and we have here a uh, chicken spring roll and also some fried wonton. Are you hungry? Yeah, I'm excited to try. <laughs> yeah, let's eat. But before we do, let's say grace. Dear Lord, thank you so much that we could come here and we could uh, experience uh, your wonderful creation. Lord, thank you that we could worship you today. Lord, I pray for this food. I pray that it be health and strength to our body. Lord, I pray you just be with us the rest of today. We dedicate it to you for your honor, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So in Vietnam, they use chopsticks instead of their hands or, or a fork. So I'm going to teach you how to use chopsticks. Have you used chopsticks before? Yep, I have, but I don't know how to use it properly. Okay, let me show you the, the right way. Uh, the first one, you hold in your finger like you do a pencil. You know, they like be right with the pencil, but just hold a little bit up further on the handle. The second chopstick, you slide right underneath that. Yeah, right like that. Yep, you got it. Now, only one chopstick moves. The one that you hold like a pencil, that's the only one that moves. The other one doesn't move. You can try it. And it's so easy. <laughs> Only the one moves. One is stationary. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> try, try, try. It's really easy. Good. But you don't cross that. <laughs> ah, this is easier. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ria and uh, Sita, right? Yeah. Sita. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so how is uh, Vietnamese style momo? Or as they say, fried wonton? It's really good. Mm. Mm. It's really yummy. Like you should try once. <laughs> yes. It's almost like momos, Nepali momos, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Fried momo. Mm. <laughs> nice. Enjoy.
this um, temple area and we walked up to the third floor where there's a roof area here and they're making these these uh, wax candles out of a brass in a brass bowl can you explain what is this um i think this has some religious value they offer this to buddha and it has got some religious values and they're offering it to them awesome. and they sort of light they light the candles it's always like worship. Yeah, yeah, it's worshiping. We're not Buddhist, we're Christian. But yeah, so we don't have much idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands of candles. But I want to know why you're lighting candles. What is the purpose? Actually, it's my late mom's birthday. So. Oh, today's your late mom's birthday. Yeah. Oh, so you're doing this in honor of her? Yeah. Oh, okay. In honor of her. Okay. Inside at the top of this temple, they have here a assembly room or shrine or something. <laughs> Good idea to feed the birds, according to the <laughs> you see from here on the picture, it's this one right here, right? Yeah. That's Ema. They also serve here in Latin. Yeah. It's also a tradition of that dish. This is a very popular spot. A lot of local people come here. That's why we have to wait. Uh, get a seat. Yeah. Let's wait. It's a lovely place. Yes. <laughs> Let's get in there. And this is a laughing. Suka laughing. So I'm here at the Tasty Laughing Center in Bodo Stupa. And this here is laughing. It actually originates from Tibet. It's a Tibetan food. Now, an interesting story, when I first heard of laughing, I was with a Nepali friend and we were outside and we were busy doing something and, and after the end of the day, my friend said, hey, come, let's go to a laughing house. And I was a little bit shocked because I didn't know what a laughing house was. I thought maybe this is a house where everybody's happy and laughing and uh, who knows what's happening there. So, so I said, uh, okay, with some little bit of, of caution, I said, okay, let's go to a laughing house. So we went to this laughing house and I'm thinking maybe it's, who knows, maybe it's marijuana because marijuana is often labeled as happy. So maybe it's a marijuana house. So I went into the house very slowly. Here was a restaurant and they served laughing noodles. Let's try some. Mm. And this is Kima. So here I am, I'm going to try Kima. What do I do first? I have to mix it, right? Yeah. Like this. Am I doing it right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The sauce is in there, so you have to mix it properly. Oh, got it. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it for you. Yeah. Uh, and also, if you want, there's kill, you kill. Spicy, piru, piru, acha. And also, um, <laughs> some cute little guy that has tumor in it. <laughs> wow, it turns the noodles darker colored. Minced buffalo meat, water buffalo. How is that? Good? All right, here it goes. Mm. 
As you can see, <laughs> this is Ria's favorite. Hello everybody! <laughs> we are here in small boda. <laughs> Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> so here we see some coins in the water. Yeah. Now we don't here this is Big Buddha right here. Underneath Big Buddha there's a pond of water. Underneath it are these coins. And we think that means what does that mean? Um, they're asking for they wish to be proven. Mm, then they throw the coins yeah. in the water. Yeah. And they lost their money. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe their wish got fulfilled. Yeah. So now I come to understand why it is called Little Boda. Because inside there is a model of the big Boda. I want to tell you a little bit about the history of Boda Stupa. Boda Stupa is about 1600 years old. And the interesting fact about Boda Stupa is it was built by a woman. Uh, an older woman had a desire to build a stupa. So she went to the king, of, uh, the, the king and said, I would like to build a stupa. Will you please give me land the size of the skin of a water buffalo? Then I will build a stupa there. So she went to the king and the king said, okay, you want land only the size of a, a water buffalo? Okay, sure, you can go ahead and build your stupa. But this older lady was very uh, clever and she took the water buffalo skin and cut it in real thin strips and stretched the skin out over a large territory. And thus she built the Boda Stupa. And the local people, they got a little bit disappointed in her because it took a lot of space and they said, Oh king, why did you give her all that land? But the king said, I must stick to my word. And there you have it, the history of the Boda Stupa. On top of the Boda Stupa, you see the eyes. And these are known as Buddha's eyes or the all-seeing eye. No matter where you are on the Boda Stupa, the eyes are looking at you and see everything. On the very top, we also have a golden spiral. In the year 2015, an earthquake came to Nepal and it, it damaged the spiral that they had to rebuild it. So they rebuilt the whole spiral and it took 30 kgs of gold to rebuild the top. Wow, real gold. Here are the Buddhist prayer flags. Each Buddhist prayer flag has five different unique colors. One, two, three, four, five. And each color means something special. I think blue means sky. Then there's red, green, white, yellow. But I'm not sure that the actual meaning. So one thing that I wanted to do while here is they just built, or in the last couple years, several years, they built Roadhouse Cafe here. Roadhouse Cafe is one of my favorite pizza shops in all Nepal. Come, let's go. Do you like pizza? Yeah. I do too. It's my favorite too. Let's go. So we're here at Roadhouse Cafe, right beside Bodana Stupa, and we are going to sample the four cheese pizza. Four cheese, I think it is um, mozzarella, yak cheese, goat cheese, and one other cheese, but I forget. Let's try it. Mmm. Have a taste. <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Your favorite. How is it? Deri mito? Mito means delicious in Nepali. <laughs> well, that was some very delicious pizza. 
Roadhouse Cafe has got to be one of the best pizza shops in all Nepal. One of my favorites. But let me tell you something, dear friends. My mom's pizza is still the best in the whole wide world. And that's a fact. What, what is Tankar thinking? Actual Tankar painting is a kind of the art. Uh, which is painted on cotton canvas. Uh, normally, in the past, they paint with the naturally stone colors, and also mm. later on, they use uh, even real 24 karat gold, stuff like that. Mm. Especially, it takes the theme of the Buddhist ideas. So it's Buddhist like a, based. Like a history, philosophy, literature, legends, and many more informations are included in this type of art. And actually, it seems that Tanka is painted in the native Tibetan. Mm. Probably with the help of Nepalese, uh, Indians, or Chinese during that time. Uh, oh, let them, yeah, so uh, Tibetans, they did a bit of So what is the time frame? So you're saying Tsonga painting goes back even thousand years? Uh, could be even more than that. But there is no strong proof enough yeah, before the 12th or 13th century. But the uh, idea seems like this. You see, until the 5th, 6th century AD, Tibet mm. was ruled by the nomadic tribes. Mm. They didn't have fixed school, they didn't have written from the languages. So they used to believe they were not educated. But the country was growing bigger and bigger. Yeah? Mm. So the king thought that if uh, uh, he can bring the civilization into the country, that could be better. But oh, how? Okay. Yeah, so you see, the time he saw that the uh, Buddhist world of that time, the civilized world. Okay. So if he can bring the Buddhism to the country, it could be a good way to civilize the country. Okay? Oh, okay. But problem is that to teach to the people, those who are uneducated, when there is no written form of the languages that are like that, it could be difficult. Mm. Okay? So probably in the need of Tibetan, with the help of Nepalese or uh, you see Indians, and probably with the help of Chinese, they could be creating the art, which tells mm. the history, philosophy, the phrase of legends and information, which could play the role of the teaching tools in Tibet. That could be the beginning phase of this. Mm. But uh, you see, Thangka painting, compared to the, the uh, like a metal crafts or something like that, it is perishable. Okay. So probably the type of art is not existing till today, mm. but uh, 13, 14, yeah. six, uh, 15th century uh, tankas is still uh, available in, in, many in the market. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I've seen some that are really old yeah. and some that are, that are uh, just painted yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Normally what, where you are coming, yes, so we are painting place. We produce it now and so we are certain. So but based on that ideas which they use in the past days. Uh, so it's a form of spreading Buddhism. Uh, not, not only really. not only okay. the for the Buddhism, you see in the past days in the Buddhist uh, history, yeah, if you see the Buddhist universities in the past days, like Nalanda University, Baladi University, Wadandapuri universities are like that, okay. they are not simply the teaching the Buddhism. Oh, okay. It is more than the Buddhism. They're teaching the arts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah like even even the like a medical things, even mm. the like a, uh, astrological things, and also the Buddhist philosophy, history, literature. So it's like yeah, a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly, okay. exactly okay. like that. Yeah. How many years have you been painting? Good question. <laughs> I was only eight years old when eight I started years. this. Now I'm 51. You can't bet that how long I've been in this world. <laughs> eight years to 51. I'll be 43. Yeah, 43 years. Yeah. Wow. Well, that seems like a very fine detail goes into it. Yeah, there should be. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you see, there are two kinds of art you will see. Some arts you will find eye pleasing type of art. Yeah. Some art, it is like a depth uh, information of the history, philosophy, literature, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And normally I say the good art, when there is information also perfect, artistically yeah. also perfect, I say that is the good art. Oh, okay. okay. Sometimes artistically it can be beautiful painting, but information wise it, it is not giving the proper information. Mm -hmm. Sometimes information wise it is very good, uh, good art, but artistically it is not good. Mm -hmm. And this is the place we try to combine proper information with good representations of the art. Oh, okay. Putting it together, the yeah. two together. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. That was a very good explanation. Thank You're you very so much. Good. It is thank my you. pleasure to share to you. At the shop surrounding Bodhis Stupa, they sell these different twigs and pieces of wood for burning incense. Hmm, smells good.
And now we're going home. <laughs> and now we're at the end of the day. Bye bye everyone. Bye. See you next time.